Hello everybody, my name is Arija Subti, a fifth year medical student, and I'll talk about hypertension. Hypertension is a long-term medical condition in which the blood pressure is persistently elevated. Long-term high blood pressure is a major risk factor for coronary artery disease, strokes, heart failure, and chronic kidney disease. Types of hypertension Primary hypertension is also known as essential hypertension. It is an idiopathic condition. On the other hand, secondary hypertension, it occurs secondary to a specific condition, such as sleep apnea, tumors, and kidney failure. Hypertensive crisis defined as a systolic blood pressure over 180 or diastolic blood pressure over 120. Hypertensive crisis can be further classified as hypertensive emergency depending on end organ involvement. Now for white coat hypertension, it's believed that these patients feel extremely stressed when they visit the clinic, so they have a high blood pressure. Outside the doctor's office, the blood pressure is normal. Now for resistant hypertension is called when three medications can't control hypertension. How to diagnose hypertension? Please concentrate, this is a high yield information for the exam. If a patient came to you with high blood pressure, what will you do? First, repeat the measurement. If it's still high, ask the patient to use ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. Um, it's a device that measure the blood pressure for 24 hours to uh, confirm the diagnosis. If it's not available, ask the patient to uh, use home blood pressure monitoring uh, twice a day for one week. If both weren't available, tell the patient to come to uh, the clinic twice a week for three weeks. Uh, moving on to hypertension classification. Uh, there is a multiple guidelines to classify hypertension, such as the American Heart Association or GNC. Uh, in both guidelines, uh, the uh, normal blood pressure is below 120 over 80. Uh, in um, the American Heart Association guideline, stage 1 hypertension is uh, 130 and above systole or uh, 80 and above diastole. Stage 2 is 140 and above systole or uh, 90 and above diastole. Uh, for the GNC guideline, um, the uh, stage 1 hypertension is 140 and above or uh, 90 and above. Uh, stage 2 is 160 and above or uh, 100 and above diastole. Hypertension is diagnosed. Then what? You have to take a history physical examination and do lab test, uh, especially serum creatinine with GFR. Uh, you have to make sure that the kidneys are working well. Uh, for the drugs and um, ECG. Uh, patients should be screened for cardiovascular risk factors, uh, presence of end organ disease, and if the patient is below 30 with abrupt onset of hypertension or uncontrolled hypertension, you have to exclude secondary hypertension. When to use antihypertensives? Adults with a stage 1 hypertension who have an estimated 10 years atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk of 10% or higher should be managed with antihypertensives. Also, any patient with a stage 2 hypertension. Next, oral antihypertensive drugs. We have a primary agent such as thiazide, ACE, ARBs, calcium channel blockers, and secondary agents like loop diuretics and beta blockers. Thiazide diuretics inhibit reabsorption of sodium and chloride. A patient on thiazide must be monitored for hyponatremia, hypokalemia, uric acid, and calcium levels. ACE inhibitors are the drug of choice uh, for patients with hypertension, chronic kidney disease, and proteinuria. Uh, but uh, there is a risk of hyperkalemia um, when ACE is co-administered with potassium supplements or potassium uh, sparing diuretics. Uh, generally, ACE inhibitors should remain the initial treatment of choice for hypertension. ARBs are used for patients who are unable to tolerate ACE inhibitors. ACE and ARBs should not be combined. 
and it has the same uh, risk of hyperkalemia with uh, potassium supplements. Calcium channel blockers can be divided into dihydropyridines and non-dihydropyridines. Dihydropyridines bind to L-type calcium channel in the vascular smooth muscles, uh, which will cause vasodilatation and decrease blood pressure. Uh, it's effective as monotherapy in black patients, uh, but it can cause lower limb edema. Loop diuretics inhibit the reabsorption of sodium and chloride. Um, they are commonly used to control volume retention and prescribed for patients with decreased GFR or heart failure. Beta blockers are not recommended as first-line agents for hypertension unless the patient is suffering from heart failure or ischemic heart disease. Uh, now I'll explain GNC8 hypertension guideline algorithm. So whether the patient is above 60 or below 60, diabetic or non-diabetic, it doesn't matter. Um, we should uh, concentrate whether the patient is non-black or black. Uh, if the patient is non-black, we can use any, uh, any class of drugs. Thiazide, ACE, ARBs, uh, calcium channel blocker, uh, if the patient is black, um, thiazide and calcium channel blocker are preferred. Um, while if the patient is suffering from chronic kidney disease, we should initiate ACE or ARBs. Moving on to target blood pressure. If the patient is suffering from chronic kidney disease or diabetes, or he's below 60, the uh, target blood pressure is uh, below 140 over 90. If the patient is above 60, the target blood pressure is below 150 over 90. Moving on to management of hypertensive crisis and hypertensive emergency. If the systole uh, is over 180 or diastole is over 120, uh, we should assess for uh, end organ damage. If there is an end organ damage, this is a hypertensive emergency, we should admit the patient to ICU. If the patient is suffering from aortic dissection or preeclampsia or uh, phenochromocytoma, uh, we should reduce the blood pressure immediately below 140 uh, during the first hour. And uh, in case of aortic dissection, we should uh, reduce it uh, below 120. Uh, if the patient don't have these conditions, uh, we should reduce the blood pressure uh, to 25% over the first hour, uh, then um, below the 160 over uh, 100 to 110 uh, during two to six hours. Uh, then uh, uh, reduce it back to normal within 24 to 48 hours. Now for screening recommendations. Any person above 18 uh, should be screened uh, for hypertension. Uh, if the patient is below 40 without any risk factors, uh, we should screen him every three to five years. If the patient is above 40, African-American, or have other risk factors such as um, obesity, overweight, uh, prehypertensive, uh, we should screen him every year. At the end, thank you so much for your listening. Uh, if you have any question, you can contact me uh, through my email. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu anna la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayki.